give you some different insights from uh, normal people uh, on uh, on uh, what is happening there. Um, uh, very often, yes. Um, I mean, one example that we hear, happens often in the United States is that some uh, politician who is very uh, self-righteous and uh, ha advertises himself as moral and superior to others will then get caught in a sexual scandal. <laughs> it happens over and over and over again. Uh, and there are a lot of complicated theories as to why. Is it because of the way he was treated in childhood? Is it the way, uh, is it narcissism? But I think there's a very simple explanation from evolution, and that is uh, men, m more so than, than women, uh, have a desire for multiple sexual partners just for the sake of having multiple sexual partners. And it's easy to see on evolutionary grounds why that should be true. We see it in many other species. So one doesn't need a complicated uh, psychoanalytic explanation. It's just, the, I think, uh, a desire that men have. It doesn't mean that they have to do it because that's only one part of the brain and there are other parts of the brain like the frontal lobes that can see into the future, can inhibit impulses, uh, but the impulse in the first place is not surprising to an evolutionary biologist. In evolutionary terms we are most, more or less the same as, as the cavemen. Uh, biologically, yes. very close, yes. And in evolutionary psychology too. Yes. Uh, so how can we, with that uh, mindset that is adapted to a very different uh, situation, uh, what uh, tensions and what uh, conflicts it creates for us living in a completely different society? It me I think it means that life is a, uh, will always be a matter of conflict and tension. I mean, Freud had the famous book Civilization and Its Discontents, and in some ways that is the human condition. We already talked about the fact that children have to go to school. They don't innately develop the ability to read or to do mathematics or science and so on. Uh, it means that we're going to need laws and institutions because you throw people together, they're not naturally going to cooperate, especially in a big complicated society. Uh, we're going to have uh, to push back against parts of our nature in order to enjoy the benefits of a complex society. One other example, I mean, one example is, is monogamy, sexual uh, restraint. Another is um, our natural tendency to favor our blood relatives. All over the world, you have the problem of nepotism in large organizations. People like to hire their brothers and their cousins and so on. That doesn't lead to the best organization. We have to have rules against nepotism, and that is something that we're stuck with. You mentioned Freud. So, uh, was he right about the primacy of, of the sexual instinct? I, I don't think so, no. I mean, Freud uh, used the word um, libido to refer both to sex drive and to the general psychological energy. Uh, and I think people obviously do have powerful sexual desires, but they have other desires as well for status, for power, for esteem. Uh, for protection of children, for knowledge. Uh, the sexual drive is just one of, of many drives. Mm. Uh, you mentioned sometimes the voice of the species. What mm. is that? Uh, the universal human nature that allows people in one culture to uh, appreciate the stories and art forms uh, of another, or people in one era to appreciate the uh, great myths and legends and stories of another. Why Shakespeare continues to be relevant today, not just in Anglo cultures, but all over the world in translation. I saw in one of your lectures you mentioned uh, the ravages of uh, modernism, uh, especially in architecture, uh, how Le Corbusier uh, tried to, <laughs> to <laughs> substitute Paris for <laughs> a complete, uh, uh, you know, yes. destroyed uh, city, a uh, so modernist in city, and it looks like Brazilian. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, well, I think Brasilia may have been designed by one of his uh, disciples, as yes, I recall. It was. Yes. So, what what is uh, that uh, um, behind? What is the philosophy behind that kind of? Uh, uh, you mentioned that it's the blank slate. Uh, what I, is that? I think the, uh, the extreme examples of modernism in the 20th century, and even more so postmodernism, do uh, come from a denial of human nature, that there is uh, no 
universal or innate sense of form, of beauty, aesthetics, safety, comfort, that people will just learn to adapt to whatever designs are imposed on them by planners from the top down. Uh, and some of the excesses of modernism and postmodernism come from the denial of human need for, uh, for beauty and comfort and safety. What else is part of this denial of human nature? I think the idea that parents mold their children and therefore if anything goes wrong with the child it must be the parents fault. The idea that all prejudice is uh, something that children learn uh, and that if we only didn't teach children to be prejudiced they would naturally cooperate with uh, other groups. The idea that violence is a kind of disease or defect or malfunction as opposed to uh, a tendency that people will have unless there are mechanisms designed to prevent it. That, those would be three examples. Mm -hmm. What is the relevance of Darwin, of the theory of evolution, for the new sciences like uh, what you do? I think the, the biggest relevance is, well, the two, there are actually two kinds of relevance. One of them is phylogeny, the fact that we descended from primates descended from um, an ancestor mammal and that our physiology and uh, a lot of our biology comes from the fact that we are primates and that we are mammals. The other is adaptation. Uh, if it wasn't for adaptation we would still be primates. Uh, that is evolutionary change shapes the body and the brain in order to meet cer achieve certain goals in a particular ecosystem uh, and explaining why the brain is good at some things and bad at other things, I think requires some attention to the niche that it evolved to uh, prosper in. Are we still evolving? Are we going to become another species? Well, we, no one knows, but we, there probably is change because evolution never stands still. But it's not as if you can extrapolate so that our, you know, our brain will get bigger and bigger and our body will get smaller and smaller and our eyes will bug out like in science fiction. Uh, there are changes, but since it occurs over many generations, it's very hard to tell what they are. Thank you.